Hello, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this session, to a new edition of this TPG 4230. Um, yeah, first I wanted to make some comments about. Uh, so, anything first? Any question from last week, from the material covered last week? No questions. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make a comment that uh, first. If you, um, let's go back to that exercise that we have done last class. Okay, the, just some technical difficulties because in networks, Today the topic is about production networks, okay? And we we have to be careful of some details that we kind of overlooked uh, when we discussed the single well approach. So one thing was that, uh, if you remember in this case, okay, I think we were assuming, okay, here we have too many decimal points, okay? Usually we want to work here with only one or no decimal, no decimal points. And I think here, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you you assume the rate, right? And then we calculate it from the IPR bottom flowing bottom hole pressure, and then you progress in that fashion. It might happen that at some point, for example, when you go and calculate the pressure at the wellhead, it might give an error. Okay, the function gives an error because the evaluation, I think in that case, um, how is the equation, if re you remember it? How is the tubing equation? CT P1 over ES squared minus P2. Yep. And if we are going to, we are exactly uh, want to clear out from this expression P2. Okay, so we have Q over CT uh, times uh, minus. Something like this? No, but in the first equation. Hmm? If you want to clear P2 from the first equation, from this equation. No, the first equation is not correct. Okay. So how is it? There is a power 0 0.5. Here? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So you know, if there is something wrong or there is something that you are wondering, you have to do like he did, okay? Just tell me. Because if the error propagates, then I might have it again in my calculations. Then some people are thinking have also the same question and comment, you know, and so don't be afraid, just tell me right away and then we can correct it very early and we can, you know, take measures. So I think that the only thing that it does, it makes this square, right? So if you see this expression, if we are assuming a rate that is too high for that pressure, that is not physically possible. We are going to get the square root of a negative number and then Excel is going to cry, okay? It's not going to be able to calculate. And that's something that we kind of overlook, we don't consider, but if you, those of you who actually have worked with the exercise later at home or, you know, were working on that, you will see that probably if you, at some points where the pressure is too low, when you try to calculate wellhead pressure or P-template or PLEM, you might ha encounter this problem, okay? So, and, and that's why I told you here we are assuming rate and not assuming pressure, but usually we try to assume uh, pressure, okay? Because we know the physical range where it could be. But just be aware of that, okay? Sometimes this evaluation of this function will give error. If if P1 is less than Q squared over CT, okay? And you have to be careful, especially, you know, when you try, when you, are, you are have some, uh, when you do it manually. Hmm? Okay. Here we go. And you have this um, okay. gas manual. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so when you are doing it manually, you go one day, you go, you go uh, one time at a time. Okay, you can check and see exactly what happened. When you're trying to automate that and do it in kind of in a sequential manner with the computer, then you might encounter some problems and you have to make it very robust so these kind of things won't happen. Okay, maybe I will make some comments later, but just be careful and be aware of that because especially in networks, we have kind of to propose an automated way to solve that and we, sometimes we might encounter some of these issues. Okay. We're trying to compute something, we did a bad assumption, a, high, a rate that is too high, and then we get a, a pressure that either is negative, or when we put it in the evaluation, it then it cannot compute. Okay, so be careful with that. So here I'm going to put some comments. So I, I will say this in general is be careful, sorry, be careful with the initial assumptions. For calculating equilibrium. We all the time have to try to, to assume a rate that is very close to the final rate, okay? In this case, it doesn't matter too much because all the time you're going to get here enough energy, so the wellhead pressure is very big, and at the end we have a choke, okay? But when we calculate the equilibrium or that we have to assume a rate and then test several times, then we might encounter this, this issue. Yes? Yeah, so I tried to assume the pressure, CWF, mm -hmm. and then to learn the rate, but the problem was that when I calculate the wellhead pressure, using the PWF and rate, it was giving me the circular reference error. Okay. Because, because PWF is calcul uh, the rate is calculated based on PWF, and you are calculating PWS again from PWF. In that case, I haven't tried on that way, but um, because this is a case more of design, okay? So that's why we are using the rate, because we are fixing the rate and we try to calculate the delta P of the choke, okay? That's why we decided to assume here the rate. But uh, the way you will do it with the solver is that you assume a PWF and then you put in the solver that you want the rate to be exactly 2.2. Did you try that? Okay, and that should give you kind of that, that should give you, um, uh, I mean a solution, okay? Because you, f you are forcing, you're trying to find the b flowing bottom hole pressure until your rate is exactly the, the plateau rate that you want. Okay, but the final comment or the final bottom line is be careful with your initial assumptions for of variables for calculating equilibrium. Okay? That means the rates that you're going to assume, equilibrium rate or equilibrium pressure, uh, because you might have encountered some problems while doing the especially the con the co current calculations. Might cause problems. because simply there is, for that rate that you specified, simply there is not enough energy, okay? You have assumed a rate that is too big and maybe at some point in the pipe, the pressure becomes negative, which means that you have to lower the rate, okay? But for the case of Excel or a solver, it's going to crash, okay? Because it's going to get a negative number inside a square root and then it's going to crash. It cannot deal with complex numbers. Hmm? Remember that these methods also for networks is based on newton raphson okay? That you need some kind of derivative to go to the next point. All of you know, are familiar with newton raphson I've seen it in the kindergarten, primary school, yeah? Okay? So it's, it needs a derivative, and it needs that the point that you are evaluating, it will be defined. If it becomes undefined, then it stops, and it cannot move anymore. So then you have to go manually and check what happened, and you try to correct the issue. And we don't want that, usually. We want to be automated and try to be able to do the calculation um, smoothly. Then there was another comment that we are neglecting, in a way, the temperature. Okay, we are making a lot of assumptions. For that, we are assuming dry gas. Okay, we are assuming average temperature, average pressure to calculate these resistance coefficients. And also, we 
you, if you say there is continuity of pressure, there should be also continuity of temperature, right? The temperature downstream should be the same that the temperature upstream. But for now, we are leaving that complexity behind because for that we will need to add a lot of equations and solve a lot of the equations at the same time. So, uh, but be aware that you also need to do temperature equilibrium. That will be kind of an energy equation. Okay, so now we go, the topic for today is, uh, is uh, we're going to talk about production networks and we started a bit last class, but uh, we were a bit out of energy, so I, I, I think I will repeat a bit. So the, in this case I will refer, it's like the architecture of your production system. And you have really just in a very kind of a rough way, you have two architectures. Okay, you have one that we can call standalone standalone wells. Okay. This is a standalone architecture. Where each well has its own a flow line, its own separator, and in a way they are working independently from the others. Okay, that's I told you the typical case for uh, gas wells or shale uh, oil wells in the US. Or it, that might also happen if you think about it, also this Gulfax platform that I showed you before. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a picture. But you have a platform, okay, and you drill all the wells from the platform. And then just every well you route it to a separator. Okay. And you had a very, for example, a very big manifold. That commingled the production of all of these wells. And was very close to the separator. So in that case, really this manifold, I could just neglect the flow in this manifold and assume that all of them are producing straight to the separator. So this configuration is what I call standalone wells, okay? And then I had the other configuration that is a bit more common, that is network configuration. Network or commingling, we can also call it commingling network. And remember, why, what happens, why are we not, you know, usually in production engineering, we should also look what's happening outside of the separator, downstream of the separator. But for us, it's so important, the separator, because the separator, as I mentioned also before, yeah, the separator is all the time by a control system that I think we have made the drawing before, but here now you have a bit nicer. Okay, by a control system is all the time making sure that the pressure is constant, no matter what is the rate. So you really you lose this behavior of available and required versus rate. Okay, so uh, really there might be many other things after the separator, but if you think about hydraulically dependency, hydraulic dependency usually ends up at the separator, hydraulic. And also, so we go from the wells, from the reservoir, okay, that also we are uh, looking at the given depletion state, so we are saying that the reservoir pressure is constant, and then we are going to the other, to the other bound, to the <coughs> other uh, limit, which is the separator, and that's also a, a constant pressure, okay? So just to give you some examples of networks or how they come into play, um, we have, for example, this, anyone, anybody here coming from Russia? No? Well, there is uh, like this field, the Salim field in Russia. Okay. Where you have uh, the wells are located in uh, clusters. You have a group of wells, and they are producing, in this case, each one of them has its own separator. And then the production is commingled by flow lines and pipelines all the way to a processing facility. Okay. Some other examples. Um, 
Okay, like subsea whales is a very um, typical example. Okay, like in this case, I have Gulfax, and I have these subsea templates where, as you see already, the structure we have four wells or three wells per template. Then I'm commingling the production to this flow line, and I'm also commingling the production from another template. And here is also commingling the production further of all of these H, I, N, and, and, and J. So at the end, I have all of them flushing or all of them discharging to the same to a common pipeline. And that's where it begins to have some interaction that depends the pressure of the well at the wellhead or the level of, or the pressure levels at one well depend on the operating conditions of another well. Okay. Like in this case, the same case, you have also in a platform, you have here that you have the wells that were drilled from the platform. And in that case, these wells are really so close to the separator that they can be assumed that they are producing independently. Okay. Uh, yeah. So subsea wells is a important example of networks, and that's why we need networks to analyze that. This is the Uruku field in Brazil. Anybody here from Brazil? I have picked all the wrong examples. I think I have to use examples from where from. Norway? Well, here we have one from Norway. Okay, so the Uruku field, located here in the Amazonas uh, forest. Uh, in that case, you have also a, a, a lot of wells, and they are, the production is being commingled and sent further by flow lines. They discharge to a common trunk line, and then they go to the processing facilities. Let me just show you how it's uh, kind of interesting, the, the layout. Okay. That's when they're beginning to drill, and they drill, if you see, it's in the middle of the forest. So I hope there is nobody here from Greenpeace, or it's going to give us a hard time. Okay, but you just cut the trees here in this part, you make a well, uh, a pad, well pad, and then from there you begin to drill a certain group of wells. And then you go and make another pad, you go and make another pad, and then you commingle the production using, here is to install these are access routes and also they are to install the pipelines okay the flow lines and then the pipelines and that goes these are the central processing facilities where i have everything centralized and i can process the fluids in one place okay and as you can imagine the flow in this uh, in all of these branches is multi-phase flow so i have a combination of or simultaneous flow of oil gas and water Anybody here took any course in multiphase flow? No? One? No? You took it? You had? Don't be shy. You have to say I took it. Okay. Still, we are going to give a small introduction to multiphase flow. Uh, yeah. So that's the processing facilities. There's another picture. Okay, basically you have the, the following uh, structure that you have paths. If you have very remote areas where it's difficult to locate the wells, either if you have a uh, forest, if you have a desert, if you have, for example, uh, some snow, you have some uh, ice. So then you prefer to create a path where you, from there you can drill the wells and then you have to put flow lines to take the flow from the path all the way to these trunk lines or sub trunk lines. And then you commingle all the production, it's kind of a tree. If you see, it looks like almost like a branch. It's branches from a tree, and then all begins to commingle and goes to a central processing facility. And sometimes this distance might be very long. Yep. What's the difference between this one and the Amazonas? No, this is, ex this is very similar to the Amazonas, to this field. So it's like a water trunk line? Yeah, you have, pa you have well pads. These are where you have the wells. And then you have put a flow line all the way reaching and you connect it then to the, to the trunk line. I don't think I have a picture of, let me check. Yeah, I can show you later a picture of a junction. I think I have the way where this one merge these two flow lines and pipelines. I can show you a picture of a, of a, a, a junction later. Uh, some other examples, just to bore you a bit more. Okay, this is another field in Colombia. Also, it's in this case the the landscape is slightly different. 
in this case is uh, llanos, is uh, savannas, is flatlands that they have also some vegetation but mostly there's no dense forest like in the case of the Amazonas but it's also um, has a lot of rivers and has also a lot of places where people cultivate they grow things to eat and that's located here this small red dot that you see here in the figure and you see exactly the same you have a well pad that they have to clean and they have to put flat and they have to uh, put also access roads to be able to take all the equipment all the trucks there and from there they drill the wells okay the oil all the time you know it's it's a shame we cannot find oil in uh, Copacabana or in I don't know some nice beach it has to be a remote place where it's very far away that you have to take 16 hours truck and you have to be tired and you arrive and then you have to work so it's it's all the time usually all the time like that okay here even here you have to take a helicopter but here is the difference is that you go and have a nice dinner you see you, you the the meals in the platform they are really really good okay but the, all the other people uh, they have to go and travel here and maybe they have bad food bad beds bad everything so Okay, and these are the central processing facilities of the field. Usually they might have more than one, depending if they are too spread. And then you have, remember, if we have long distances, then we have to, the pressure drop will be very, very big. Okay, so usually people might consider to put different processing facilities. If it's easy to access, sometimes they put in the most convenient place the disable, if you are going, for example, in the case of this field, they go by trucks. Okay, they, they produce the oil, they put it in trucks, and then they have to go all the way here to a terminal where they put it in tankers and they ship it to the rest of the world. So really if they put these uh, processing facilities in a place that is difficult to access, then the movement of the trucks is going to be slower and you're going to have operational losses. You're going to, to have, you might have also here some issues with the guerrilla, I don't know, okay? <laughs> all kind of issues and this is also another example a field in uh, Saudi Arabia called Sheva okay that you see a completely different landscape but also we have the same thing we have networks okay so those of you who know that your geography you know where you are just in the base of the boot of uh, Saudi Arabia and you see this is more or less the landscape also it's not a beach. Well, it has a lot of sand, but it's not. Uh, I guess it's very, it's very hot. So uh, also you have here the central refinery, central processing facility, and also the wells are located. In this case, they cannot pull the wells from the dunes because the dunes change very much with the with the wind. So they have to put it in these flat patches, and this is what is called a safra. And from here you have a group of wells. Then they commingle together the pipe. The pipe, they either put it on top of the dunes or they put it drill under the dunes and then they commingle production from this. Then they go, 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 go until they reach the processing facility. So again, you have kind of a network structure. And these are people building the pipelines. In this case, they are not buried, but they are, I think, on top of the, on top of the sand. What else? More pictures. Today the class is not about pictures. Okay, then just wanted to make a comment that now there is a concept and some people use it around the world that you say, okay, all the time that I have dry wellheads, like in the case that I showed you before, then I won't have a network really. I just can analyze every well independently. But now there is this concept that maybe you got some presentation. I think I got it from a presentation, one person that came here. But they say that they can drill the wells from this platform it's a kind of a jacket on man platform doesn't have anything so if you end up there you certainly won't have any a hamburger or anything so uh, they drill it from here but then they have to take the processing facilities there for example in this well this is a drilling ship but let's say that here we have uh, either a semi sub or we have something else okay you can see now why I dedicated to engineering and not to drawing so, and then still you have to take the production from this jacket, okay? You still have to take it with a line all the way to this plot, to this FPSO, 
Okay, so there you still have a network, and if you have a combination of many jackets, then you have also a, a commingling network. Okay, so still you are, in some cases, even if you have a offshore, if you have dry uh, Christmas trees, then you might have still a network. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why do we use this kind of network instead of subsea? Because subsea seems more. Well, it's what I showed you some classes ago that the cost of the dry uh, Christmas tree is much cheaper than a, a wet Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And also, it's easy to maintain. If you have to do installation, if you have to do access, you can come here with a barge. You can come here with a jackup. You can come with a yeah drilling rig, and you can just do intervention on top of it. Okay, it's cheaper. But also at the same time, then you have to build this uh, structure to drill the wells. Okay. Uh, let's see what other picture. Yeah, and these are the typical, I already showed you one. That picture is for later. So you get the point, I think. It's, uh, yep. In this uh, figure, where is the head, uh, well head is at? Uh, here, it's in this deck, I think. So if we have three wells in this uh, platform, uh, we can have three wells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, they drill it from <laughs> there. Okay, so now let's go a bit about performance, hydraulic performance of networks. Now you know that it's important, that it exists, that almost every field has a network. Let's go now a bit on the calculation part. Hydraulic. Networks. So we, we can start, I think, like doing what we have done previously, okay? We said available and required pressure curves. Without knowing much, you already know how to characterize different parts of the system, so we can try to think in these terms to see how far we get. And there is one very important issue if we, let's, let's put a very simple network of three wells, okay? Here we have well one. Okay, not too much, not too complicated, just well two. Well, three, and then that goes to a separator. Okay, like for example, a subsea system. Um, yeah, the main problem is if you, for example, you have this this system. Okay, you can say that you have this system depends on flow rate one, this branch depends on flow rate two, and this branch depends on flow rate three. Okay, so really to do equilibrium we have already three rates and when they merge here then we have a fourth rate so it's kind of difficult remember that all of these approach available and required it depend on because we have everything on the same rate okay on the same on a single well everything is on the same rate so here we have four rates so how to draw the curves so you might say okay you can do for each one of them you can do one curve let's let's say for well one okay let's say we take in this case, we're going to calculate for well one what? The available pressure curve, where? Where do you think all the time where we choose the, the point of interest in our system? Okay, at the wellhead. But in this case, does it make sense to put it at the wellhead? Huh? Some people say here, some people say here. But I propose to put it here. Why? Because that's where I have the merging, okay? I'm merging there, I'm commingling the production. So that might be, to my opinion, to my point of view, where I'm probably going to have the issue, okay? With all of these rates. So let's see, just, you know, maybe later we can change, but now let's say we take this system up, up to the junction. We call this a junction, okay? Another time you have to think what kind of junction is that? If you have multiple wells and they commingle, we might have a manifold there. For example, okay, we have a structure that receives. Uh, I think I showed you pictures of manifold before. Okay. So we have this curve, and here we have P junction, PJ, and we have and we have this well. We have certain reservoir pressure. Okay, pressure one. They could be in general. They could be different. So I want to calculate, or I want to say how the 
available junction pressure will look like versus rate one. And how does it look like? Like this, like this, like this. You should know already. Say, oh, every, everybody at the same time, how does it look like? Like that? Okay. <laughs> Any mathematician here? They can tell us how to name this curve. No? Thing is called concave downwards. Monotonic, concave downwards. Okay, so here we have Q1 and PJ1, and we have something like this. Okay. All of you agree? When I increase the rate, then I will have all the time less and less pressure available at the junction. Okay. And there might be a rate where uh, actually I cannot produce. After this point, this I cannot produce. Now I can do the same for all the other wells. Let's see, and they are going to look exactly the same for each one of their rates. All of you agree? Yeah? Okay. Okay, then I have P junction. It's going to be the same P junction because there is only one junction, okay? So I say P junction, but now I have well two. And again, it's going to look something like this. Q2, but now with P junction. Hmm? And they are going to have different characteristics. Here is what plays what I told you. Maybe you have a very strong well with a very big reservoir pressure, but is located, I don't know, uh, uh, 20 kilometers from the junction, but then you have a very weak well, but then it's, you know, it's located one kilometer from the junction, and then you have an average well, but then it's located five kilometers from the junction. So maybe at, at the end, the three of them produce the same, okay? But the thing is that they have different deficiencies in a way, okay? It's like, a, it's like people. Uh, you have, maybe you might be good in mathematics, but you're not good writing, okay? And that overall, you have certain qualities. Maybe another person is good writing and is not good in mathematics, so they are, overall, they are also a good person, okay? Might happen the same thing here with the whales. Or you might have really a guy that he's very good in mathematics, he's very good in languages, he's very good writing, okay, and then that guy is going to produce more and more and more. Yep, maybe. It's like life also. Okay, and then we have the third well, let me see how I draw it. Okay, like that. Okay, and I'm finished now with all wells. They have different rates, but I'm finished now with all wells. Now, what is missing? The required pressure curve, okay? But I cannot, this curve, I cannot put it on top of any of these figures because they are in different rates, okay? So really I cannot. So I have, again, to do the same thing that I did with these three to plot it in a different, in a separate plot. So I'm going to take this part. So these are available. Remember, very important to know the distinction. Available pressure curve. This one is available. I'm going to put it in red. Then you have available, this one. This one is also available. And now I'm finally going to plot a required. And then with these two, you got the impression like from what we saw last week that you should be able to calculate to compute the equilibrium rate, okay, to compute the operational rate. And how that's going to look like? Like that, okay. No fear, okay. So now how do I find, or anyone has a suggestion if I have all of these curves, how do I find, how many of you took any electricity course in the university? or in the Barnehage, yeah? Physical. University, okay? You had, you remember something that was Kirchhoff's law? That you had to say in one node, then you have the summation of uh, current was the same, yeah. So in this case also we have to do, you get also the impression, we have a network, okay? When you have a commingling. So really, we have to have some equation, some additional thing that tells us that Q4 is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, right? This one has to be honored because this is mass conservation. We are not electrical engineers, but we say mass conservation in the junction. Okay. 
So we need that additional equation. So one way that I propose to solve it, okay, let's see if it makes sense. I say first, or let's say method assumed to solve. Should be actually assumed method, method to solve. Okay. So first I'm going to assume P at the junction. Okay, there is one unique P. So I'm going to assume it. And then I'm going to calculate calculate Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And I'm going to do that with each one of the curves. This one with the available, this one with the available, this one with the available, and this one with the required. Okay? So what happens? I come here with my P junction that I assumed. Okay, let's put it in green. PJ that I assume. Let's call it let's call it star. Assume PJ. Not talking about pajamas. PJ. Okay, so you read and you read your rate Q1 star and then you put it also here PJ and you read your rate star and again you do the same thing here PJ. I see that you have to go back and forth. I have, you know, that's my advantage. And then you go lastly here to this. and Q4 star, okay? After that, I read all the rates, okay? Or, yeah, you can say calculate, baby is better if for this graphical example, it's a read, I'm reading those values. Okay, and they are going to be star. And then what do I have to do after I have all of these rates? I have to check if there is mass conservation. Okay, I have to check if the sum of one plus two plus three, that gives me four check for mass conservation okay q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 no sorry minus q4 should be equal to zero okay if it's not what do i have to do again have to assume another PJ, go again, read all the rates, and substitute here until I get this converge. And if you see one vital part of this process is this equation. It's very important. Uh, that equation really was, was closed the system, okay? So really in a network, all the time you have to look for mass conservation. First, we are using one, equa one equation that we, also we had in electricity that was that the PJ1 equal to PJ2 equal to PJ3 and equal to PJ4, okay? The pressure seen for every place, the pressure at the junction is unique. I have only one pressure, okay? And the mass conservation. Now, one can ask, okay, so, but I can assume, is it possible to assume rate to solve this problem? But mm -hmm. why are we doing this iterative procedure? Why can't we just directly by putting the pressure equation because we have pressure yeah we go just slowly we go to that this is just to show you how you solve it graphically and then you can also you will have to do the same if you do it analytically okay tranquilo <laughs> okay uh, yeah so how do you solve it with rates it's exactly the same thing okay I go and assume a rate one I go and assume a rate two, I go and assume rate three, and go and assume a rate four, or, yeah. let's see here, iterating with rates. Remember that this concept is just to show you about available and required to see how the equations work, okay? What is each equation telling you? But when you put the bunch of equations in a matrix and you solve it, that's nice, okay? But you don't understand really how, what is the behavior of each equation and why you're getting the solution that you're getting, okay? So that's why all the time I like to do the graphical method, even if we are not really going to use it much for calculations in the future, but that tells you, gives you an understanding what solving all the equations, the analytical equations is, is doing, okay? 
iterating with rate. So we have to assume Q1 star and then you obtain PJ. In this case, I will call it one, okay? Because not all of them are will be the same. Then assume Q2 and then I'm going to get PJ2. Then I get and I assume Q3 and I will get PJ3, okay? And four, I'm going to calculate Q4 has Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, okay? And I'm out of space. And five, I'm going to say uh, with Q4, I'm going to read PJ4. Okay, then I want, uh, there is a sixth step to say check if PJ1 is equal to PJ2 is equal to PJ3 is equal to PJ4. If it's not, I have to again assume a new set of values. What do you see fundamentally more different from this problem than the problem before? Than assuming rate versus assuming pressure. If we have a mathematician here, he's going to cry, okay? He's going to say, this one is much more difficult. Why? I have to guess four variables, okay? In the other one, we just assume, we just guess a pressure. We assume one variable, okay? It's much simpler to iterate with one variable than with many variables, okay? But you can solve, still you can solve the problem, okay? Um, Yeah, let's take a break, uh, 10 minutes, and we come back with the second part of the lecture. Okay, so that was the graphical method, and you can understand why if I have, this works quite okay if I have, for example, this one junction, okay? But now what happens if I have another junction and I have other two wells here, okay? Let's say I have a template here, and I have another template here, and I have another template here, then it becomes really a nightmare because I have to make kind of, you know, how do you, you do you deal with this line? Okay, that will depend only on Q1 plus Q2, okay? But this one will depend on Q3 and 4, and this one will depend on 5 and 6, so it becomes kind of messy. So in that case, and really we don't use the graphical method, only sometimes to understand the network if it's simple, but uh, most of the time what we do is just use the equations, okay? We just put the set of equations, as I told you before, the same thing that we use for the well, sometimes get frozen, so the same equations that we use for the well, flow lines, pipelines, uh, energy equation, mass conservation equation, and uh, momentum equation, we put all of that together in a soup, and we try to say to someone, a solver, 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 please, you know, solve this uh, set of equations and find a solution. Let's make a case, you know, uh, so let's put here a comment, okay? When the network when the network is too complex, then it's we could say that it's not difficult, but it's kind of inconvenient to use the graphical method. So we go for the analytical method. Okay, so let's make a simple example. Uh, just, you know, you have two wells discharging to a common junction, and then you have a pipeline, and then you have a separator. Okay. So we already know, and this is a dry gas case. So what, how many equations do we have? We have one, the IPR, okay, for both of them. So we have, how was the equation for the IPR? If you remember, Q1 equal to CR1 
PR squared minus PWF, 1, okay? Squared to the power of N, 1, okay? That's for wheel 1, because it's going to be quite crowded. Okay, and for wheel 2, I have Q2 equal to CR2, PR2. They might be producing from the same reservoir, okay? And then I can use the same PR for both. But in principle, they might be different. Okay, so that's the IPR equation. The tubing equation, let's see if I remember correctly, equal to CT1. Then I have P1 squared over ES minus P2 squared over to the power of 0 0.5. Yep, and this should be also 1. Okay, here we have kind of an issue. We have to, have to call this flowing bottom hole pressure and well head pressure of one, right? Let's go up further. C2, 2, PWF2, ES2 squared. Here is a squared only the pressure, right? The E doesn't, is not squared, I think. P, well head 2, squared 0.5. And then we have still the flow line, okay, two flow lines. And here we have Q1 equal to C FL1, okay, this is flow line 1, flow line 2, this is well 2 and well 1. And here we have um, P well head 1 squared minus P junction squared 0.5. Like that? Yes. Q2, C, flow line 2, P will hit 2, minus P junction, 0 0.5. And then I have the pipeline equation, which is Q, which one? Q1 plus Q2 equal to C pipeline of P J minus P separator 0 0.5 right Ooh, so finally those are all the equations that we have okay so let's say uh, how do you know if the system you can solve the system any ideas if the number of equations is the same as the number of unknowns okay so let's count so Q1, that's an unknown, okay? I don't know what it is, so that's an unknown. Who is counting? My finger or you, someone? You are counting, okay? This one, I, sh I should know my system, so I should know how to calculate the CR. But at least I know I have some well tests, so this one, I know. Reservoir pressure also should be an input, okay? Flowing bottom hole pressure, no idea. So I have two unknowns, okay? Then I go to well two. The rate, also no idea. CR, also I should have a way to estimate, analytically test something, so I have. Reservoir pressure, I have. Flowing bottom hole pressure, no idea, have four, okay. Four, and yeah, the N also I have, okay. This one should be N2, like here I made a mistake. Okay, so how, so far we have one equation, four unknowns. Doesn't look okay. Huh? Two equations, four unknowns. Doesn't look so good. Okay. So let's see again. Here I have the same unknown, so I don't count it again. Okay. This one I have. Bottom hole pressure, no idea. Well head pressure, no idea. Another unknown appeared. Okay. I'm going, you know, don't cry yet. Just, you know, be strong. So doing, uh, yeah, this S I know. This S I know, this also I don't have any idea and I don't have any idea. So how many so far? Let's let's do something a bit more organized. Okay. So here we have two equations. We can say we can count it like that. Equations and unknowns. Okay. So here I have two equations and four unknowns, 
and here I have how many new unknowns? Two, and two more equations. So finally, when I managed to 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 get two more equations, now I got two more unknowns. Then on this this one, this one, but it's the same that I had before. This one I have. Sorry, this one is also a question. This one, okay, but that's the same that I had before. This one is a new one. So here I have one unknown additional. Uh, here Q, I already had had this unknown. Here I have the C field, the C flow line. Then wellhead pressure. This one I don't know, but I had it before, right? And then junction is the same junction. Okay. So this. So here I have things begin to look a bit okay better okay so I have one unknown but then I have two more equations so how far I go the score how does it go six versus seven, seven. seven. okay so I still need one more equation so I hope the last equation that one is the savior okay it doesn't give me any more unknowns so this one okay I don't have them but I also didn't have them from before see flow line see pipeline this one I don't have it but also didn't have it from before and the separator bingo okay have one more equation and no more unknowns so here I do the add up 7 and 7 okay I can solve this system can solve this system okay of equations okay that here yeah so you can, if for the, this case, for this very, this very simple case, you can use, uh, so what kind of method do you use to solve these equations? Okay. You can use analytically, you can go and compound, try to solve all of them, okay? But that, if you begin to think that we have, in real life, we don't only have two wells, but usually we have 10 or more, that might become a bit, you know, not very wise to do it like that. Uh, and also the in this case is very nice because we have everything is an expression it's explicit okay but usually we, you will see later I hope by next week we will see multi-phase flow and things become very different for multi-phase flow okay you don't have explicit exp expressions it's a completely different method to calculate so really that's very nice to do analytically but don't we don't want to go there usually we use a numerical method okay and so the system of equations using a numerical method and what method do you think might be suitable for that Newton Raphson for a system of equations all of you at least saw that at some point in your career I guess using a numerical method and the preferred method for by childs and big ones and people in China people in in, the, in Norway by everyone is Newton Raphson for a system of equations. Okay. But first, one disclaimer. We have to make this system of equations really bulletproof. Okay. If we, for example, go remember, what is, you know, Newton Raphson, what is doing? If we see it in one variable only, we have fx versus x. Okay. And the function is doing something like this, okay. or let's say, let's put it a bit trickier. Okay, so. If you guess a point here, for example, that's your initial C, okay? Then you're going to get this point, right? Okay, you say, you evaluate this point, you calculate the derivative, and then you shoot the derivative until you get zero in the, in the, in the, in the, in the y-axis, okay? Then you go back and you do the same thing. You go and read this point, this is my x2, then here, I shoot again with the derivative, I calculate the derivative at that point, then I shoot again, get this value here, then repeat until 
I reach certain tolerance, okay, until the x from the previous step, xi plus 1 minus xi, is below certain tolerance, right? Okay, so what happens, that's what I'm telling you, what happens if you go and, like, this is a very nice behave function, okay, we, of course, if you try maybe a value here, then shoots, and maybe you're going to get something out of range, okay? Or what happens if that function for some reason is not defined? Okay, our function for pressure drop is nicely defined here, but then at some point here becomes undefined. Okay, I just enter and do the same thing, the derivative, and then I'm Then I'm using this value, go to the function, undefined, okay? No, no solution. What happens? I cannot use this automatic facility. I cannot use this, uh, this, uh, this solver, okay? In our case, uh, the solver. Why? Because just the function here became undefined. So we have really one comment to solve in an automated way. Remember numerical methods all the time. We are using some automated procedure that we execute with the computer, okay? So we have to make our models or our equation, we have to make our equations a bit of a bulletproof, okay? Bulletproof, that means that if I give a badly or not very well assumed input then I'm still going to either it's going to give zero it's going to find a way that the solving algorithm doesn't crash okay avoid crashing of the solving algorithm so maybe you're not going to be experts in that you know, here we can do it because we have, as I told you, all the equations are open. We know exactly what, what is behind scenes. But when you go to a simulator, a commercial simulator, maybe you try some options and maybe never converge, okay? Maybe, you know, it fails, it crashes, it just shuts down and it disappears from the screen. You're working on your computer, okay, I'm getting results, and then pff, disappears, okay? When you click run, the program disappears. Okay, so you have to be aware that these things might happen and what can you do in that case? You think, okay, maybe I assume a very wrong value of delta p, or maybe I'm assuming a bad value for the rate of the will. Maybe that's not physical, okay? So you have to think on those terms, and you have to be a smart user. But at the end, you know why that's happening, okay? If you make a bad assumption of your initial conditions, if your model is not, model, not bulletproof, then the algorithm might crash, okay? And that you might have in your own code, uh, commercial code, etc. Okay, so let's put that comment here, useful for using commercial software. Okay, so I'm going to paste here after the lecture some notes, those of you who are feel a, need a bit uh, refreshment on Newton Raphson, I'm going to uh, paste here some notes by Professor Gulan. Uh, but we really we're not going to put too much focus on that that's not the focus on the course to find kind of approaches to solve networks uh, the numerical part uh, so we are going to just to use the solver okay so I have a class example but I think it's good to cover another case if um, Okay, I want to cover another case because remember, for the single wheel we had two cases, okay? One of them was we had the numerical model and we calculate flow equilibrium, okay? We have no control on that. We just want to compute what will be the rate that that system will produce. But we had also another case, if you remember, that I fix the rate, I provide the rate, and then I compute the delta P of the choke. Can I do the same thing with networks? It should be possible, right? So let's say for that case, so before we go, any question about this procedure? No? Okay, so I'm going to put here the details on Newton Raphson so you can read later. So now let's say we have a network, okay, we have wells, but now let's say that they are very close, really very, very close to the junction. Each one of them has a choke, okay? 
and they are very very close to the junctions so the flow line can be really neglected okay Then I have a pipeline and I have the separator, okay? So let's see what happens if we want to solve this problem. So now we have two wells, we don't have to draw too much. So we have, we can say P wellhead one versus Q1, P wellhead two versus Q2, and P junction versus Q3, okay? This is Q1, Q2, Q3, and uh, this is wheel 1 and wheel 2. How they're going to look like? You shouldn't have any questions anymore. Looks like this, something like this, and something like that. Right? Okay. Now I say I fix the rate, okay? When is this kind of, uh, you know, when is this... Um, when is this the case? When someone gives us the rate and then we check if we can produce it or not. The reservoir engineer, okay? They have a plan. They have run their simulator, the reservoir model for the whole life of the field. They say, if you exactly extract this amount of fluid from this well a long time, we're going to get our nice recovery factor that we predicted. But you have exactly to extract this value that I'm telling you. So they go and they say the production engineer, please tell me if this rate you can produce this rate or not. And then we go and we listen and we are going to give them an answer or not. Okay? So let me put that that example. For example, when with production rates from the reservoir engineer, okay? Those are usually obtained to increase recovery factor, okay? Or to achieve certain recovery factor or to achieve certain recovery from some areas, okay? So what do we do? We do, let's say, he gave us this Q1 star and Q2 star. So we go exactly the same way that we did before, enter into this curve, with this Q1 star and read PWH1 star with this Q2 star and PWH2 star and here with the sum okay Q1 star plus Q2 star and I read read P junction so how do I know now finally that I can produce that rate or not I have to compute the delta P of the choke of each will okay so let's put here the steps uh, use q1 and compute or read in it in our case read p will hit one use q2 p will hit two and use Q1 plus Q2, read PJ star, and then I calculate choke, choke delta P, okay? Here I say delta P choke one, how is it? P wellhead one, minus P junction star, they are very close, so we can assume almost all of them are in the same point, okay? The only thing separating them, if you see the only thing separating the wellhead, the wellhead from the junction is the choke, the only thing. Hmm? Delta P of the choke and delta P of the choke two equal to PWH two minus P junction. So how do I know if those rays that he gave me, they are feasible or not? These chokes have to be positive, okay? If the rates are feasible,
then delta p choke one has to be positive and delta p choke two has also to be positive if one of them gives you a negative value that's typical early early times the reservoir has enough energy to produce no problem producing the rates at the later stage okay then the pressure declines 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 the ipr declines 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 and then at some point you will see that you have open already the choke is fully open and then what do you have to tell the guy to the reservoir engineer no you cannot produce this rate so either you calculate the rate that you can produce by using the method before or you tell the guy please tell give me another rate this rate is not going to work okay any questions I? It will be equal to zero, right? The delta P in the choke. Yeah, until this. Yeah, for the equilibrium rate. Yeah. yeah. Be higher or equal? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? So, for example, P junction is too high. Can we, like, Okay, uh, boosting I haven't done in class, so but we can try. That's okay. So how do you do boosting here? Let's say now that we we are going to have a just we are going to have a separate session that's going to be on production enhancement techniques, and we are going to talk about boosting. Okay, but let's let's say what happens with boosting right now. Boosting. Okay, and we have the option to put, okay, we have the two lines, they're very short. Okay, here I have a boosting station, and then I have a separator, okay. Wheel one and wheel two. So I want to calculate what will be the delta P of the booster to deliver certain rate. Hmm? What kind of uh, booster is not attached to the wheel box? And this is not an ESP or uh, gasoline? No, that's a multi-phase booster, or what people are using here in the North Sea to boost production. Okay, let's, uh, you know, it's kind of a tricky, I prefer we do an exercise first simple and then we come back to this issue, okay? don't want to confuse you okay. um, don't have keyboard anymore Okay, so we go back to what you can do is you can compute uh, boosting for each one of them separately. Okay, if you have a booster in each line, but let's let's keep the case of booster for later. Now, something that is a bit difficult to grasp is that let's say we have I think I have a picture of that. So this is the lady, you know, usually we use available and required, but this is the lady that we need for doing for a network, okay? Because we only have two hands, so we have to tell her, please come and, you know, help us with um, with this equilibrium, okay? Okay, so let's assume that we have, okay, for this choke case, Okay, let's assume that we have this case, okay? And here I'm going to plot the rate of wheel two and the rate of wheel one, okay? So let's first begin with the case fully open choke, okay? 
I have this system, okay, now I have the two chokes are fully open and I can produce certain combination of rate that is unique, okay, because it's due to flow equilibrium. So I have here, that will be the point of flow equilibrium. And that will be fully open uh, choke. Fully open chokes, okay, Q1 and Q2. Now what happens if now I close completely the choke of well 2? Okay, then this well 1 will be flowing alone in the pipe and it will produce more than that rate or less than that rate? It depends, okay, on what, it depends on what? No, no, I'm just saying you have two wells, they have their own IPR, and then you close completely well two, and you leave well one flowing alone in the pipe. Huh? Will be less or more? Who says more or less? Okay, now I give you like an, an, an I okay, let's say that this pipeline is like that, okay? Here you have the seabed, and you have here the plat the floater or the platform, and you have the separator here. Now, well two, let's say that is kind of a gas gassy well. Okay, it has a lot of high GUR, and this is almost liquid well. Okay, it has a low GUR. What happens when well one has to produce a loan in the pipe? The gas content, okay, of this well will be very low. So then the gravitational back pressure will be very high, okay? So in that case, maybe the production of this well alone, well one, will be lower than when it's producing together with the other, right? Everybody sees that, yeah? But now what happens if the two wells are very similar? They have almost the same GOR. Then if you remove one competitor from the line, maybe the rate will be greater, okay? We don't know. But in this case, let's assume that it's greater, okay? That this is the rate. Okay, the two of them have more or less the same GUR, have more or less the same conditions. So that's the rate. Uh, okay. Whew. Okay, and what happens now if I close completely choke one and I leave close, uh, fully open choke two? Okay, the same thing. Okay, the point could be here or the point could be here. Let's put it now that is on this point. So here I say, Fully open, fully open choke uh, two and closed <coughs> choke one. And here, this point is closed choke two closed, choke two closed, choke one fully open. You see that? Yeah, so I have so far three points. So what I'm going to tell you, this story is going to be a bit difficult to believe, but if you join them, not with the line, but let's say you're in point one, okay? All of them are fully open. Now you begin to close choke two, close slightly, close, leaving one open, okay? So on this line, I'm moving uh, choke one is open. And choke two is closing. Okay. Choke one is fully open and choke two closing, closing, closing. I will be moving through that line until I reach this point. Right? Everybody sees that? Okay. And now the same thing is going to happen on that direction, but in this case I'm closing. Closing choke one and Choke two is open. Okay? And it will be the same thing. I will reduce and reduce and reduce the rate until I'm exactly here. This area that is kind of confined by these three points or by these two lines is the feasible rates of the production system. The rates that I will be able to achieve by choking. Feasible rate combination. of well one and two with choking. 
okay? And everything that is outside of this area, then it's not possible to get it, no matter what, unless I maybe change the production system, okay? Put boosting or something. But if I only have chokes, this area inside is feasible, this area outside is unfeasible. And let me just pull, maybe I have a figure, I think. Yeah, and this is actually from the example that we we're going to do. I just took my time and did that. So you have exactly that. If the reservoir engineer comes to me and says, I have this Q1 and Q2, please tell me if they are feasible. I just come to my nice plot <coughs> and say, yeah, you can produce. Or, no, you can produce. You have to reduce the rate of well too, right? But for that, I have to be run multiple simulations or multiple tests changing to plot, to plot this line and to draw that line. What happens when I increase the size of the system? I have three, four wells, five wells, and I have to, it's going to be horrible, okay? I have to do a lot of combinations. Can you see, can you visualize that, okay? And so that, what, that's one thing. What's going to happen with this area with time, with depletion, when reservoir pressure goes down? It's going to shrink, okay? It's going to shrink and shrink and shrink because all the time, what I can produce, this maximum point, is going to go in this direction. Okay, so this was at time one, then I have a time two, then I have a time three. Okay. But this is doing exactly, instead of running the model once, okay, to check the rates. Here you're making kind of a map, okay, to see which combinations just by choking, and I can do this because I have two wells, okay? If I have three, then I have to do too many combinations to do the map, okay? So this this tells you that with this, uh, with this system I have, um, yeah, kind of a feasible region and a non-feasible region. Any questions so far? You have to take some time to digest it, okay? Take maybe it might be difficult to understand. Because when we close one well, then why this rate uh, increase from the equilibrium point? Yeah, you might think that it has less competition, okay? It's flowing by itself in the pipe. Yeah, but both, both wells are the same. Yeah, but both wells, they increase the rate. This increases and this increases. Yeah, that I'm saying that if we close one well and if both wells are identical, then why the production from one well increases? Well, no, these two wells they are different because you see, I think uh, here the axis is one million and that one also reaches almost one million, but this one reaches less, like 600. Yeah. So they are one is weaker than the other, I think. Okay. But still, for example, if, if you, clo if you uh, close one well, first well, then the production from the second is increasing. If you close this well, yeah. uh, in, in, in if you close here, here on this line, well two is, is closed, okay? Mm. And to get all of these points, you have to choke well one. Right? This line is when choke two, flow rate of two is zero. That means that the well is fully closed. Well two is fully closed. But you really, with choking, you can get every point in this line. Okay? That will be the equivalent to, you have really, in this line, okay? You have really just this system. You have a well, and you have a pipeline, and you have a separator, okay? And you can do your equilibrium at the wellhead, available and required, okay? P wellhead, Q. And then you can see, I can get this rate. This is the equilibrium rate. This rate is the one that goes here. Right? And then I can get any other rate by choking. By I can get this rate, I can get this rate, I can get this rate. So hmm? if we are choking the one well, the, the, the increase in rate from the other well is due to the removal of the excess flow line? The removal of the other well in the pipeline. Okay? Because the other, the other, well, remember this case, we are saying that they are too close to the flow line. So actually, there is no flow line. The two well heads are one next to the other. Okay, and this point. 
So we just took it away, and then this well is not producing through the same pipe. So let's say friction losses, they are less, you know, you have less uh, frictional losses in the pipe. So that's why this rate increases. Hmm? Yep. If you have multiple wells, uh, are you taking a combination of each two wells? You have to say, in that case, it's very complicated, that's why I didn't plot it here, but then you have to say, leave it one fix, one choke position fix, you have to change, sorry, two, then you change one, and then leaving the other one, then you change, okay? Okay, yes? Is it kind of calculation for junction pressure? For junction pressure? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, the pressure, Yeah, optimization. Let's wait. That's also another another session. Okay, so let's wait for you are kind of a bit ahead of your class. So um, yeah, optimization. We leave it for. We will see later how can we optimize such a system. Okay, because if you see the summation of the two, I don't plot it here, but you can have also that the sum of the two wells. Uh, you want to find exactly the choke opening that gives you maximum total rate. Okay. And we, for that, we have to make another plot that I don't want to do it here. Okay, so I think maybe I won't have time to. Okay, let's try. It. Let's try. Just try. Maybe I won't be able to finish it, but let's try to make the exercises on its learning. Or you want to? You just want to stop? Yeah. Oh, which one of you wants to stop? Let's make democracy. Wants to stop now? Or how many of you wants just to you know to continue? Okay. <laughs> That's the bad part about democracy. Uh, okay, so then we stop and we take the exercise tomorrow. But please just take some time to check the exercise that you are familiar with what I'm giving you. Okay? So let's do the exercise tomorrow.